the new series, Living the New Life in Christ. And, um, you know, we began to relate, you know, we, we went to scriptures that, that we mentioned that the Lord himself qualified us for this life and he did not have to consult any power there be in order to choose us and qualify us to live a new life in him. And we said that when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, we I kind of went through the things that we signed up for. And I said to us that the reason a lot of us a lot of us struggle when we come into this new life is because we import our old files into this new new life and we want to run this new computer with the old files. It's almost like trying to run. Um, let me use the word. It's like trying to run. And Windows Vista with Windows XP files. It don't work. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Microsoft was smart enough to make sure it don't work because they want you to give up your XP and stick to their new product. Mm -hmm. And they kind of do it now often when they come up with a new product, they make all new softwares and programs for the new product such as the old one will not work for the new. And they are just, um, you know, they are being very smart, but it's again, um, it's, it's like a reminder to the believer to say, stop trying to run this, your new life with the old files. It don't work. He said, you're, you're, you were translated from darkness to light. Yeah, you know, and one of the things the Lord began to teach me is that um, when, when we were translated from darkness to light, if you're not going to struggle in this new location, you got to know that when I know firsthand that when you move into a new location, you know you're, you have to, your heart is prepared to learn. Because you're not going to be able to make the most of your new location if you don't have the mindset of a student or the mindset of somebody who is going to learn. You may have to learn a new language. You may have to learn a new culture. You may have to learn to eat new foods. It happens in the natural, but the truth of the matter is in a, in a Christian walk is exactly the same thing. Because the culture of the kingdom of darkness is totally different from the culture of the kingdom of light. The language of the kingdom of darkness is totally different from the language of the kingdom of light. The things you fed your spirit and your soul and your body with in the kingdom of darkness is totally different from the food that you eat in the kingdom of light. So try to feed the new man, the old man stuff, don't work, and that is why there's conflict, and that's why there's stagnation in the Christian world. It breaks my heart to see people who have been saved for over 40 years, 50 years, and still do not know their left from their right. Mm -hmm. You know, because um, part of it, I don't blame them, because the Bible says, how can they know if they've not been taught, and how can they ta be taught if nobody was sent to them? So part of it might be that they just haven't been taught, and thank you, Jesus, that, you know, time is in God's hands, like we read. Isn't there in the scripture in the Bible that talks about us being able to be fed and taught just by getting in our word? Oh, we yeah. Don't, mm -hmm. We don't have to go out necessarily all the time. But it, it, we're, in it's our, our responsibility for our Yeah, growth. because he told us to meditate on the word day and night. He says that, let this my word not depart from your eyes. Keep it in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and they are health to a man's whole body. Some people don't even know that they have to read the word because they got saved. They were never told that, you know, you have to stay in the word. You have to read it. You, you can't afford to be reading one paragraph a day. That won't, you won't, you know, it's like a, a seven-year-old that just drinks two ounces of milk a day. I mean, milk is protein, and it's got fat, and it's got some nutrients, but it won't keep you. You know, it might keep a two-month-old baby, but it won't keep you, you know. So some people don't even know that because when you come to faith, you don't know anything. You don't know your left from your right. You're a newborn baby. You don't even, it's like my daughter learning English. That is why when you say 10 minutes, it says 10 minutes right now. <laughs> yeah, if you say, tell her, it's going to be tomorrow. Okay, so what, what does that mean? It's tomorrow right now. It's tomorrow. <laughs> You know, because you're a newborn baby, you're having learning new culture, new language, new principles, new strategies, you know, so that you, the, the thing is, if you get born into the kingdom and nobody tells you, boy, this is just the beginning of the journey, there's a lot to learn, some people 
could just get born and just sit down there like, okay, at least I'm going to heaven and do nothing else. Yeah. But a lot of them sometimes they don't know. Mm -hmm. it, it's like if you don't know something, you don't know it. How can you know what you don't know? Right. You get yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Paul was the one that said, how can they know if they were not taught? And how can they be taught if nobody was sent? You know, so in this new life, living the new life in Christ, we have to know that it's going to require change. Mm -hmm. Change is the only constant thing in life. Change is the only constant thing in life. I want to give us a scripture, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12 to 13. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12 to 13. 2 Peter chapter 1. Because, I'm, you know, it's like, why would you be teaching... A bunch of people that have been feeding not just meat but hard bones the last three years <laughs> in this assembly. Why would you be taking us back to living the new life in Christ? This is the reason why I'm doing it. Uh, let me read it from verse 12. Well, I said verse 12, right? He says, let me write it down. I'll start it. This is the reason I'm doing this series, okay? He says, wherefore, hmm. Can we go here? Can you go here? Just I just want you to bring it in more modern English. Um, so this is Peter writing to the church. He said, So I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you have. Because I'm not talking to baby Christians right now. I'm not talking to, I'm talking to people who at least I know in the last three years have been fed the meat of yes. God's word. Yes. But you say, why would you then be going back to the new life in Christ? Because it's almost like going back to the found, uh, foundational teachings. But this is why. And Peter was saying to them, he said, I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body. Because I know that I will soon put it aside as the Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember the things. You know, so he said that, verse 12, he said, I'm reminding you of the things, even though you know them. You know them. Is it that I still appropriate for me to remind you of the things? He said, you, you know that it is appropriate for me to refresh your memory on this thing. Because the truth about the word of God is that if you haven't used a particular principle or reminded of a particular principle for a period of time, somehow it gets um, buried under all the other issues that you know you have acquired over time. There are certain basic truths about the, our work with God that you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I know that. You know, that if somebody didn't reawaken that within you, it's buried over all the other things you've acquired over the years. So it is appropriate that from time to time, we go back and we refresh your memories of the things you already know, but I have confidence that you will learn some things you didn't know before. Because God's word is alive. Because God's word is alive. And because there is so much to God, and there's his mercies are new every morning. So there's so much that we're going to learn, you know, about him. So we're talking about a change of location, that a change of location, one of the consequences of our change of location from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light is like we lost the citizenship of one nation and gained the citizenship of another. The thing with a spiritual life is that you cannot have be a dual citizen. You can be a citizen of the kingdom of the world and be a citizen of the kingdom of heaven at the same time. It don't happen. You're either one or the other. So the thing with our work, so when you lost your citizenship to the kingdom of darkness, you gained the citizenship to the kingdom of light. And that makes you an automatic stranger in the kingdom of darkness. First Peter chapter 1, verse 1 to 2 and verse 17. 1 Peter... 1, 1 to 2, and verse 17. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, he's writing this letter to God's elect. And this is how he described them. He said, to God's elect, strangers in the world. 
scattered through our countries, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. If I bring that into the 21st century, I will say Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect strangers in the world, scattered through the continent. I will say Africa, I will say Asia, I will say Middle East, I will say uh, 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 USA and Canada, I will say South America, I will say Australia, if I'm bringing it into this into the 21st century. But the key thing is it doesn't matter where you have been scattered. He's saying to them, you're strangers in those lands. He's saying to them, you're strangers in those lands. He said, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by the blood. We're talking about living the new life in Christ. He said you were chosen according to the foreknowledge of God. We talked a bit about that last week, about being chosen and being qualified by God. The key thing is that he chose you according to his foreknowledge. Now, and you were, we were chosen for it through the sanctifying work of the Spirit. Not by our own works, not by our own strength, not by our own righteousness, not by how well we've done. The true the sanctifying work of the Spirit, and this is the reason we were chosen. We were chosen for obedience. So living the new life in Christ, one very key ingredient to living the new life in Christ with um, successfully and victoriously is obedience. In this new life in Christ, obedience is a key, key factor in, in how consistently victorious you're going to be. And obedience is a key factor. Um, oh, sorry, I was going back to that. This. Yeah. He says, we were chosen for what? For obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by his blood. Why were we chosen for sprinkling obedience? Why wasn't obedience just enough? Because the Lord knows that sometimes we're going to blow it. So he attached to obedience the sprinkling of the blood to say, okay, I know you're going to blow it, but the blood is there to cleanse you so that you continue on your journey of obedience. So the living the new life in Christ is a life of obedience to the word. The new life in Christ is a life of obedience to the word. The more we walk in obedience to the word, the faster and the quicker the entanglements that were associated with us when we lived in darkness will drop off. The more they will fall away. The more you walk in obedience to the word, the more the entanglements of the world will not be, okay, obedience to the word, you know I can sound this out, so I have to write it out. The more you walk in obedience to the word, word of God, the more the entanglements of the world will have no power over you. Because whoever you choose to obey, you become a slave of it. In other words, you become subject to it. So when living a new life in Christ, when you make yourself subject to the word of God, the world cannot make you subject to it. Because you can only be subject to one master. It's a spiritual principle. Okay? So obedience is very key. But the good thing is that right in that same sentence was the mention of the sprinkling of the blood. Because the blood will cleanse and keep cleansing and continuously clean and clean again and clean again because that is the ministry of the blood. He died once and for all, but the blood does not clean once and for all. He cleanses you. If you mess up again, he cleanses you again. If you mess up again, he cleanses you again because God does not desire to lose any one of us. It is not a license to remain in the old culture. Eating the old kind of food, speaking the old kind of language is not a license for that because we cannot abuse the grace of God. But the Bible is saying to us that God knows that as we journey through life, that we're going to stumble on some point and the blood is made available 
so that it takes care of issues, you dust yourself up and keep moving forward. Amen? Amen. Verse 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, it says, since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. So if we want to live this new life in Christ and be consistently victorious, seeing yourself as a stranger on this earth is key. Because if you don't see yourself as a stranger on this earth, there are certain things that will make you not be consistently victorious. One is the opinion of the culture that you live in. Secondly, it might be keeping up with the Joneses depending on what part of the country or part of the world you live. Keeping up with the Joneses, trying to meet up to man's standard, or the standard of the, of the environment, or the standard of the town, or the standard of the culture, forgetting that you, you should not be measuring yourself with, with, your, with others, but rather you should be looking into the word of God to know the mind of God and to know that if God is pleased with you and you're living according to biblical principles, that is what matters. Mm -hmm. So, we have to have that mindset. Another reason why you have to have the mindset of a stranger is that if you don't fit in, because you're going to work in places, you're going to go to places where you find it, you haven't even said anything, people already care for about you. It's, you, you know, you have when you have the mindset that you are a stranger here, it helps you to not expect that everybody is just going to buy into you at first sight. They may never ever even buy into you, depending on whether they are fellow strangers or <laughs> if they are not. When I say fellow strangers, if you walk into a place where there are believers, you know, it's there's something that just connects. But if you are the only believer in a place, Sorry, you're a stranger. You and and they will make sure they make you feel like a stranger. Because one, you don't talk like them, you don't have the same expectations, so it's like they don't have anything to really chat with you. So and if you're not confident in who you are and don't know that you are a stranger and it's okay to not be like them, there is a pressure to want to fit in. That is why. Living the new life in Christ, being comfortable as a stranger is very important. So, because it takes all the pressure of wanting to fit in in an environment where you have no business fitting in. For me, for instance, working in a place where um, for, for, for two years plus I was the only um, African, um, or you know, the only African that worked in there. I knew that the expectations of my colleague from me was different from the expectations from themselves because they knew I was born and raised in Africa. So there are certain things they didn't really expect from me because they thought, oh, well, it might not be an African culture. So, you know, there are things I could get away with just because yeah. they know I am a stranger in the sense that I wasn't born and raised here. So this is a different culture from what I was born and raised in. And also, there were things, so it was, to be honest with you, my, my fellow, when I speak with people from back home, they wonder, how do you survive in that environment? You are the only one. Don't, it's like anywhere you go, people will pick you out of the crowd. How do you survive? I said, you know what? I, I actually feel it gives me an advantage because mm -hmm. the expectations are different. Yeah. You know, there are so many things I can just, oh, oh. I didn't know you did that. And honestly, maybe I didn't know because it's not cultural to where I was born and raised. The other side of it also is that even though you might be excused for a lot of things, you also may not be able to fit in because they will always look at you as different. And which is okay with me. You know, because that means I do not really necessarily have to lower my standard in anything because, you know, They've accepted I'm different. I have accepted I'm different, so we're cool with it. <laughs> the only place where there's a problem is when they accept I'm different and I refuse to accept I'm different and I want to fit into the mold and they can't, they won't accept me in that mold and then I have to lower my standard to fit into that mold. That is where a lot of believers have issues. 
because they have friends who don't think like them, they have yeah. friends who don't act like them, they have friends, and they are trying, they are feeling, you know, I should, I'm trying very hard. You know, especially if they had friends before they gave their heart to Christ, and it's like they, they, they are like, oh, I should keep up this friendship. You know, a move, change of location sometimes may mean the total change of your whole friend list. Unless you have a husband that communicates with all those friends. Oh, well, then, then, the then, then, all the time. exactly. I drink water and all drinking alcohol. Exactly, but even in that case, the grace of God is now there because it becomes your missionary field. Yeah. yeah. Not everybody yeah, has that yeah. as a missionary assignment, but some people <laughs> have the, their missionary assignment cut out from them the day they give their heart to the Lord because... You know, if you have a spouse who is not surrendering at the same time as you, then that immediately you give your heart, you have your missionary assignment. Amen. Then the grace of God is sufficient. And then they watch you. And of course, oh, and then they will watch. Exactly. And then buy the water. I'm like, oh, I'm happy with water. I have just as much fun with water. <laughs> Obedience to the word. 
Secondly, is that the new life in Christ requires us accepting the fact that we're strangers in the world. If you get those two things, there are a lot of hurdles that it will just it will save you from a lot of hurdles in life. With your family members who are not saved, working in an environment where they are not saved, or just being in a community where people don't get your Christian work. Having those two things that your 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 um um, your allegiance is obedience to the word, but again, you are aware that you are a stranger, mm -hmm. so your expectations are different right. from them. Mm -hmm. And knowing that because you are a stranger, it doesn't necessarily, you don't have to lower your standard to fit no. into their environment. So I said a change of locations means you have to be sought to learn new things. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Let's see what's there. 1 Peter 1 3. Have we been there? One, no. Two, one, three. He says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. New birth. No child is born speaking English or speaking Spanish. <laughs> Okay, no child is born speaking any of our human languages. They speak their baby language, but not your human language. Why did I put this in here? That the language of the believer, for instance, you know, um, there are some things we say, and people say in the new life, the Bible discourages us from certain kind of jokes. You know, where it's like saying, oh, um, you would just break your head on that wall now, you know. You so I was just joking. No, you don't joke. You don't speak those things as a believer because there is power in yes. your words. So there's nothing like, oh, I was just joking. Mm -mm. So that you you find that living the new life in Christ means you have to intentionally start changing your vocabulary, intentionally start learning a new language, and you will start from the scratch. As your mind is getting renewed. As your mind is getting renewed. Remember the first thing I said is obedience? Right. Because all of this is still tied back to obedience to the word. Because if you're going to renew your mind, it's obedience. And if you're going to, if you're going to learn a new language, it's still obedience to the word. Right. Okay? And listen, what, what came to my mind when I wrote this down was like just my, my son Josiah. He's learning a new language, Spanish. He's in 10th grade. But he's doing grades 1, to 3 in Spanish. Because it's a new language, he has to start from the scratch. Same thing when we come into the kingdom. It don't matter whether we're 50 years old or 70 years old or 80 years old. Know that you're going to start from the scratch. And the Lord said to me that the same thing that same thing when people give their heart to Christ just before they transition into heaven, they're still going to learn all the things you learn from the scratch. It don't matter whether they were they lived on this earth for 80 years. If they didn't learn it here, they will still start from that scratch. There's no, you know, they will still start from grade one. Let me use that. Or pre-K. Or preschool. Wow. So what you're doing today is not a waste because whatever you have learned here, you don't have to relearn that. But all the things that we're supposed to know, for those who do not know it, it's like he, in his math class, he said he's doing certain, uh, he's doing algebra. Some people are doing what trigonometry, is it? What did he say? There's something geometry. you don't have to do, geometry. Okay, there's some people in his class that's doing geometry, but he's not doing geometry because he already, when they tested him on geometry, he already passed that level. So he's not doing geometry. So now he's doing algebra because that was when he was tested, that was where they found a gap. So, what are we trying to say? In the kingdom of God, you're making yourself available to be taught the word of God. You're making yourself available to refresh the things you already know. You know, when it's not, it has value not only for time, it has value for eternity. Because even in eternity, you're still going to be learning about the principles of the ways of God for eternity. They're the classes you've already taken and you've already mastered. You're not going to be taking them there. You can advance to the next level because there are levels. 
That is the truth. There are levels. Not everybody's on the same level. Not on earth and not in heaven. God will walk with you at whatever level you are. But I'm just encouraging you to know that when whatever principle you get now, you will not have to retake it. Because you got it. But those who were not opportune to get it, they will have to learn it. Because it's the ways of God. It's the principles of God. And we all have to learn. Because the goal is to know him. Because if you, the more you know him, the more you will love him. That is the truth. Because one, you were made to love him. The more you know him, the more you will adore him. That son said, I was made to love you. I was made to find you. I was made to adore you. I was, you know, that is what we are made for. But all of that is tied to how much you know him. And the more you know him, the deeper the depth of your love for him. The more you know him, the deeper the depth of your worship. You see, when it comes to worship, you see some people really immersed and soaked in worship. And some people for worship to them is just, you know, you know, just wishy-washy. It's all tied to how much you know him. Because when you know him, <laughs> woo, it's like saying when you see him. It's like saying when you see, when you read scriptures about John seeing him and falling face down like dead, or, or Daniel falling face down before the angel that came from the presence of God. It's, it, you. <laughs> you know where we you, you, where we are. How can I say? You know the power and the is really with you. It's just like it's like you forget everything around you. All you can think is the one, is the great and mighty God. Because you know him. Yeah, you know him. Because you know him. And the, the more, because the more you know him, the more awestruck you will be of who he is. So worship comes easier when you know him better. Right. Because we can worship him faster. When you know him better. We have that intimacy with him. Yes. The, the, and don't forget that knowing him is not a once for all thing. Because every day we're drawing closer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like he said, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. That is why sometimes you've sang some songs for ever and a day. Let's say Amazing Grace. You've always you knew it as a child. And then today you sing it. It has a new meaning to you. Right. Because you've come to a new level in your knowledge of him. And his grace. Mm -hmm. So when you sing that song, you know. it's, it, it's another depth and level of worship. Mm -hmm. It's just that. You say, I want to worship God more passionately. Know him more. Mm -hmm. Know him better. Draw closer. Stop, yeah. stop being content being in the yeah. outer court. Right. Stop being <laughs> content being a at a distance. Come, come closer. Mm -hmm. You come closer to him, you won't, you won't need to be taught worship. That's right. Because it will just flow. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because of an awareness mm -hmm. and an experiential knowledge mm -hmm. of who he is. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Whew. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Whew. Should be rounding up. <laughs> I really didn't We're having know. fun. I didn't even know. <laughs> You're not, you're just on the beginning. <laughs> yeah, you didn't even touch what I thought Interest I was going to teach today. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got two pages. <laughs> I didn't even touch what I was really oh, excited to oh, share with us. That's oh, the one that blew my mind. I, I've seen it, but I hadn't seen it like this before. You know, one of those things. Oh. I was really, wow. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll have to. It's awesome. You're made to see him. Okay, so let's let's I will I will kind of hold up here, but <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. Exciting. I'm excited to say this, and yet part of me wants to hold it back, you know, because it's like if I'm going to go into it, that was really what I wanted to teach today. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I probably got you sidetracked. No, you didn't. Have, no, no, no. It's, it's, it happens. Well, praise the Lord. It happens. Yeah. Well, there you go. Okay, so let me say this last thing before we have communion. Um, so basically, one. Hmm, yeah. 
I'll say this last thing before we, we hmm, <laughs> wow, okay, okay, so the new location, like I said, requires having to have a mindset of a learner, and it's going to require a change in learning, the change in culture, a change in language, a change <coughs> in food, a change in entertainment, the kind of entertainment that you were comfortable with before you gave your heart to Christ may not be the kind of entertainment you'll be comfortable with now that you are in the light. You know, because what was fun in the dark is not necessarily going to be fun in the light. Amen? And, um, hmm. Okay, let me share this with us. There was something the Lord shared with me. He said, you know, when we were in the dark, we were very familiar with our old nature, right? And our old attitudes. He said that when we come into the light, he shared with me that there are things, you know, there are things about you you knew even when you were in the dark. That there are things about you you don't know until you came into the light. Can you say it again from the beginning? Okay, I said when we were in the dark, in other words, when we were in the kingdom of darkness, we were familiar with our old nature and attitudes, right? So in other words, you know who you used to be. You know how you used to talk. You know how you used to react. You know, you know all of that. When you come into the light, you also know you are familiar with that attitude that when you come into the light, there are things about you that you didn't know that you start finding out when you come into the light. Because when you are in the dark, there's so much you can see. That you come into the light, the light has a way of bringing to light the things that were hidden. <laughs> Amen? He said, your old nature dwelt in darkness. Therefore, there are things you know about you while in the dark. But there are things you never knew were in you until you came into the light. The deeper you walk in the light, the more obvious the blemishes become. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay? So it doesn't mean some people struggle and feel, ah, am I worse now than when I gave my heart to the Lord? Why, am I, why do I have react like this? Why do I have these emotions? Why do I have, you know? No, it's not that you're worse off now. It's just that you're seeing things that were always there that you couldn't see because you were in the dark, but now you're in the light and it's bringing everything that is in the dark to the surface just so you can deal with it. Amen. That was why part of the, the, the thing that Peter talked to us about is not just obedience, but the sprinkling of the blood. So, oh, again, let's, this, this, is, this is going to be the final scripture. 1 Peter chapter 1, I think it's verse 22. 1 Peter 1, 22. 1 Peter 1, 22. 1 Peter 1, 22. I think so. What is it? Now that you have purified yourself by what? Obeying the truth. So that you have sincere love for your brothers. Love one another deeply from the heart. What he, remember the first he said we are called to obedience and the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. So he's telling us that obedience actually purifies us. So when the more we come into the light, the more the things that were actually there when we were in the dark, but we didn't know it because we were in the dark, and you come into the light and it comes to the surface, you know, it's like it's bringing it to the surface so that by obedience to the word of God, because now I'm talking, let me give an example. Let's say emotions, okay? Um, let me let me drive it home. Let's say when you were in the dark, you didn't care about sharing. Okay? You didn't want to share anything. Okay? In the dark. And you come into the light, and the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. You come into the light, the Bible says that you should, you know, um, share with one another. Mm -hmm. You know? And then it's like, oh, why, you know, but the reason the light is shining into that area of your life is because God wants you to choose to obey the word of God. And by choosing to obey the word of God, let's give you an example. Let's say, okay, I didn't want to share, and now I start sharing. When I'm sharing because I'm sharing because the word of God says to share, I'm, I'm being sanctified 
of that attitude and that part, selfish part of me or that self-centered part of me or the greedy part of me, me just sharing and allowing the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit to cleanse me of that part of me that was in the dark. Because the Bible says, purify yourself by obeying the truth. That is how we get purified by obeying the truth. The truth is the person of Christ and his work. Does that make sense? Yeah. So obedience has a role, obedience to the truth has a role in sanctification. Amen. You know how we looked at, once upon a time we looked at the how our prayers are answered in heaven and we noticed that there the Elders, the 24, the 24 elders had our prayers in a bowl and they had incense. And we had another angel also that had a bowl with incense and our prayers and they offered it up to God. So we said, Wow, is that how prayers get answered? You know, kind of, it's like behind the scenes. Now, we've always known we're sanctified by the blood, we're sanctified by the work of the Holy Spirit, we're sanctified by, by the truth. And the Bible is now giving us practically how that happens. He said, Obedience to the truth is the way that sanctification works its way in our lives. Mm. Obedience to the truth mm. is the way that sanctification works itself in our lives. And the truth is the living word and the written word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So if you don't take anything home today, living the new life in Christ, accept and be comfortable being a stranger Obedience, obedience, obedience to the truth, the living word, and the written word. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads and pray. Yahweh Adonai, we thank you for your word that we have heard tonight. We just are so grateful that we have the honor to be refreshed of those things that we already know. We're very grateful to you. Very, very grateful. Yeah. Lord, the purpose for which you sent for this word today, I'm praying that it be accomplished. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm praying that it will be accomplished, Lord, and, yeah. and to bear fruit yeah. in her dreadful, yeah. in the sacred name of Yeshua. Yeah. Lord, we come to this table of remembrance today. Part of having communion, Lord, it's also an act of obedience. Because you said to us on the evening that you were betrayed, the Bible says you took the bread, you gave God thanks and praise, you broke the bread, you gave it to your disciples, you said, take this all of you and eat it, for this is my body which will be broken up for you. And you said to us in your word, you said, except you eat of my body and drink of my blood, you have no life in you. You said, he that partakes of my body has life. So as an act of obedience, O oh God, we come to this table of remembrance to partake of your broken body because we desire that the ministry of the broken body be appropriated upon every area of our lives. Yes. And so by faith tonight, Father, we break this bread as a participation in your broken body. Amen. Amen. When the supper was ended, the Bible said, again, you took the cup, you gave God thanks and praise, you gave the cup to your disciples, you said, take this all of you and drink of it. You said, this is the cup of my blood, is the, is the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. You said, do this as often as you do it in memory of me. You said, do this as often, as often. So, Lord Jesus, in obedience to your command, we partake of this cup. Mm -hmm. You said when we partake of this cup, we proclaim your death until you come again in glory. Mm -hmm. And the Father said that he has given us the blood for atonement for our lives. 
And it is written also in the word that when he sees the blood, destruction and death will pass over us. Mm -hmm. So as we leave this call before your presence tonight, mm -hmm. Father, I pray that destruction and death will pass over us. Mm -hmm. I pray that every disaster that has been decreed for the season will not, will not camp at our homes or camp at our lives or camp with us. Mm -hmm. They will pass over yeah. and it will not touch us. Mm -hmm. We bring our lives under the atoning power of the sacred blood of Yeshua. We bring our families under the atoning power of the sacred blood of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. We've been bought by the blood, cleansed by the blood, yeah. sanctified Amen. by the blood, made whole by the blood. Amen. And we receive the price that was paid in full for our behalf. And so, Jehovah, as we partake of this cup, I declare that there is therefore now no condemnation for us, for we are in Christ Jesus, and the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Amen. And as we partake of this cup, I also decree, according to your word, that everything will work together for our good. Amen. As we partake of this cup, Father, I also decree that as we step into this new week ahead of us, that it shall be a week of favor, Amen. a week of strength, Amen. a week of divine protection, Amen. a week of clarity of mind, Amen. a week of singleness of heart, Amen. a week of health and healing, Amen. in the sacred name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you, Father, for we partake as an act of obedience. Amen. In Jesus' name, let's partake Amen. of the cross.